This gaming laptop has the fastest mobile CPU in games, with up to 50% more FPS compared to the next best option. It's the new Ryzen 9 7945HX3D, the first laptop processor with AMD's 3D vCache, which is meant to give us more FPS in games. But just what sort of a boost are we talking about? 50% sounds way too high, and it is. That's just in one game. Results vary by game, which is why I've tested it in 25 games at three resolutions, and compared it against AMD's cheapest 7945HX without the extra cache, and the best from Intel to find out if it's really the best laptop CPU. But first, Gigabyte have sponsored this part of the video. Gigabyte's high-end Aorus gaming laptops have been redesigned this year, while budget-conscious games are covered by the updated G5. These laptops are more powerful than ever with Nvidia's latest GeForce RTX 40 series graphics, allowing you to enhance your gaming experience and get smoother gameplay with DLSS3 frame generation in the latest titles. And Gigabyte have got content creators covered with their newly updated Aero 16 and brand new Aero 14 for ultimate portability. Check out the sponsored link below to find out more. Back to the comparison. The main difference between the 7945HX3D and 7945HX is that the newer 3D version has double the L3 cache, which matches AMD's top-end desktop 7950X3D processor. The 3D version has a slightly lower base clock speed, and although the max boost is the same on the spec sheet, the 3D version won't clock as high on the CCD with the 3D V cache. Here's how the 7935HX3D 3D looks. There are three chiplets, with the IO die down the bottom and two CCDs, which each contain eight CPU cores, just like the non-3D version. The left CCD is where things get different in the new 3D version, as these eight cores have the additional L3 cache. This additional complexity presents a problem. If your game or application is running on the CCD without the extra cache, then it's not going to get the FPS boost. Compared to Intel best laptop processor, the i9-13980HX, AMD is giving us 16 cores and 32 threads, while Intel offers 24 cores and 32 threads. Intel's chips use a hybrid approach, with 8 performance cores and 16 lower powered efficiency cores. I've used ASUS's SCAR17 and SCAR18 gaming laptops to make this testing as fair as possible, with the exact same kit of DDR5-4800 memory tested in all three laptops, as this is the speed ASUS sells them with. Something worth noting is ASUS are not using liquid metal on the newer 7945HX3D, and it's not recommended, because it uses different materials and may react negatively, resulting in performance degradation over time. The 7945HX and 13980HX laptops do use liquid metal though. It's also worth noting the SCAR18 is slightly bigger and has three fans instead of two, as it uses a newer design. But the SCAR17 is the only laptop available with the 7945HX3D right now, and ASUS didn't make a 17-inch version of the SCAR with Intel 13th Gen this year, so this is the best we can do. All three laptops have NVIDIA RTX 4090 mobile graphics, and although this is a CPU comparison, game testing has mostly been done at max settings, which may be more GPU heavy, especially at higher resolutions. The reason for this is that the 79 9945HX3D is only available with RTX 4090 graphics. And realistically, if you're buying a laptop with max specs like this, let's be real, you're probably not playing games with minimum settings. So I chose to make this a more realistic comparison. All right, let's get into the game benchmarks. We've tested all three laptops in 25 games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions. And all games were tested fresh for this comparison with the same drive Windows versions, and game updates. So let's start out with the games, and then afterwards we'll compare things like thermals, battery life, integrated graphics performance, and non-gaming workloads. Let's start out with Microsoft Flight Simulator, because it had the biggest improvement with the 7945HX3D out of all games tested. I've got the 1080p results down the bottom, 1440p in the middle, and
and 4K up the top. Intel used to have a clear lead over AMD in this game at 1080p and 1440p, but the newer 3D vCache chip is just dominating, reaching a 54% higher average FPS compared to itself without the cache, or 40% ahead of Intel, a big difference. Spider-Man is another game that saw a nice FPS improvement with the extra cache, reaching a 32% higher average frame rate at 1080p compared to the non-3D version, or 16% higher compared to Intel's best laptop CPU. Like the last game, the differences matter far less at the higher 4K resolution, as it's more GPU bound, but also like the last game, Intel wasn't quite in line with both AMD options. The 7945HX3D was 13 percent faster than Intel in Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, or 9% faster than the cheaper non-3D version. But there's no real difference at 1440p. The RTX 4090 can easily handle 1440p ultra settings here, as we're hitting 90 FPS without features like DLSS or frame generation. So you'll probably actually play this game on this resolution with the laptop's 1440p screen, meaning the CPU choice ultimately doesn't matter. Watch Dogs Legion only had a small improvement at 1440p with the 3D chip, just 6% faster. But at 1080p, there's a much larger 27% boost over the 7945HX, and similar gains compared to Intel. We'll come back to this game later, as we had slower FPS on the 3D chip when the game ran on the wrong CCD, although the average FPS wasn't too different at all resolutions in Warhammer 3, the dips in performance showed by the 1% lows were higher with AMD, with the extra cache showing the best result. Hogwarts Legacy was a little different. Intel had the best 1% low results at all resolutions, and even its average FPS was notably higher at 4K. Okay, it's only like 4 FPS, but at 4K that's a fair margin when we should be GPU bound and see no change. But I double checked the result and confirmed it. Apex Legends was a little strange too, but that's because because of the 300 FPS frame cap at 1080p. At 1440p and 4K, the 7945HX3D had the clear win, so the extra cache may be worth it if you're playing this one competitively at a higher resolution. Then again, if you're serious about the best FPS to compete, you might not even be using a laptop or higher resolution anyway. Far Cry 6 also enjoys the extra 3D cache, at least compared to the non-3D version, which was a fair bit behind at 1080p and 1440p. Intel was very close in terms of average FPS though, while also producing higher 1% lows at all three resolutions, which means better stability for Intel. And I'd argue that's more important when the average FPS difference is so minor. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an older game, but another where the extra cache was useful at lower resolutions, allowing the 3D version to hit a 17% higher average frame rate than the non-3D, or 21% faster compared to Intel. For the most part, the differences aren't quite as interesting in the other 16 games that we've tested. I'll just quickly skip through the rest of the results on screen now instead of wasting your time talking through every individual result, so feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look at any of the games tested. All this testing took a full week, but I think it's important to use a wide selection of games so that we can get an accurate picture of the average performance differences to make the fairest possible conclusion. In other words, more data equals more better. Let's look at those average differences next. On average, over all 25 games tested, at 1080p, AMD's new Ryzen 9 7945HX3D with the extra cache was almost 9% faster compared to the older version without the extra cache. This graph shows how much faster or slower the 3D version was in each game. So best case, Microsoft Flight Simulator at the top was over 50% faster with the extra cache, while a number of other games also saw nice performance improvements. Many of the games saw no real difference though, with only minor swings in either direction that are within the margin of error range. Stepping up to the higher 1440p resolution, and the 3D processor was now 4% faster on average. There are still a handful of games that see nice improvements with the extra cache, but now most of the games only had minor differences, and this continues at 4K because we're mostly GPU bound now and the CPU difference matters less. Apart from a couple of outliers, 
Apex Legends still loving the extra cache even at 4k, and Borderlands 3 seemingly preferring the higher clock speeds without it, all other games were only 2% different one way or the other. Which again, is margin of error stuff, and not a difference you're likely to notice when playing. The 7945HX3D was ahead of Intel in more games than the 7945HX at 1080p, but on average over all 25 games there's a slightly smaller 7% lead compared to the 9% difference seen between the two AMD chips. Again, some titles see big gains with AMD's 3D vCache, but these lower at the higher 1440p resolution. Of course, some games still had nice FPS improvements with the 7945HX3D. The overall average is just smaller in a wider selection of games. The difference is again even smaller at 4K. For whatever reason, Hogwarts Legacy just preferred the Intel laptop at this resolution. But again, I double checked it, and it's only a 4 FPS difference. Here's how frame rates look if we instead take the average of all 25 games at all resolutions. I think this better allows us to visually see the overall difference in a quick and easy summary. This really shows how small the difference is at 4K. On average, the 7945HX basically performs the same as the 7945HX3D, with 1080p showing the biggest difference in favour of the extra cache. Unfortunately, it's not all smooth sailing though. There is a problem with this laptop that we need to talk about before we get to the price difference. Remember how I mentioned earlier that the game needs to run on the correct CCD with the extra cache? Well, this doesn't always seem to happen. Take Watch Dogs Legion for example. The first time we tested it, it performed about the same on both the 3D and non-3D processors. I retested it again a day later and the FPS from the 3D chip was 29% higher at 1080p and 8% higher at 1440p, which shows that the first time we ran it, it was either running on the CCD without vCache or maybe on both CCDs, I'm not sure. It kind of sucks if randomly some games just might not take advantage of the extra cache, because it defeats the purpose of spending more money on the 3D version. Fortunately, there is software like Process Lasso, which basically lets you control which cores a process runs on. I tried using Using this on the games that didn't show much performance difference between 3D and non-3D processors the first time, but only identified one other game that was wrong. So just to be clear, in the previous 25 game comparisons, I'm pretty certain that all of them were running with the extra cache, but at least two of our 25 games didn't automatically open on the right CCD, resulting in performance that was similar to the non-3D version. The rest of the games that saw no real differences presumably don't care about having more L3 cache. I mean, it's cool that this tool exists for tweaking, but realistically most people won't know about it or be aware that this is how the 7945HX3D operates. Ideally, AMD and Microsoft need to do a better job of making sure that games always use the correct CCD. So then, how much more money does the 3D vCache cost? Prices and availability will change over time, so check the links below the video for updates and current sales. And if any of these these laptops do have a good sale, we'll be sure to add it to our gaminglaptop.deals website. We update that daily so that you can save money on your next gaming laptop. But sales come and go every day, so make sure you check it out regularly. At the time of recording, $3400 US dollars is the best price I can see for the ASUS SCAR 17 with Ryzen 9 7945HX processor and RTX 4090 graphics. The Intel based SCAR 18 costs $500 more. But it also has double the SSD space, a larger screen, and a newly updated design, so the extra money isn't only for the CPU. ASUS told me that the SCAR 17 with 7945HX3D has an MSRP of US$3700, so $300 extra compared to the non-3D version, but $200 less compared to Intel. Despite the higher cost, it's actually worth it from a cost per frame perspective if your primary goal is 1080p gaming, and assuming that you even care about value if you're spending close to $4000 on a laptop. The Intel based SCAR 18 is the worst value of these three, but again there's more than a CPU difference between these laptops. Gaming is only part of the story though, so let's check out thermals and see how all CPUs compare in other applications. Let's start out with Cinebench, as it's a quick way to get a rough idea of single and multi-core performance. I've tested both 
both laptops with two different power limits in place, 65 watts and 130 watts. Intel wins in single core performance, while AMD's lack of lower powered e-cores gives it the win in multi-core. At 65 watts, there's basically no difference between the 7945HX3D and 7945HX, but with a higher power limit, the new 3D vCache version was behind. These are the temperatures after 40 minutes in this workload with the fans maxed out. The newer 7945HX3D ran the coolest out of all three laptops, despite the fact that it's also the only one that doesn't have liquid metal. As mentioned earlier, the material on the 3D version prevents the use of liquid metal. None of the laptops were actually hitting the defined 130 watt limit in this test, because all three laptops were thermal throttling first in this workload. The clock speed difference was interesting. I've divided the AMD results into two CCDs, so eight cores in each. The 7945HX was clocking similarly over both CCDs, while we can see a bigger difference between the 7945HX3D's CCDs, because the CCD with the extra cache cannot clock as high, one of its trade-offs. The 7945HX3D was drawing the least amount of power at the wall, and more power generally means more heat. This puts the 7945HX3D on top from a performance per watt perspective, at least in this specific workload. The 7945HX was scoring 4% higher in this test in terms of performance, but it used 14% more power to pull that off. Linux kernel and LLVM compilation were the only workloads tested in Linux instead of Windows. Unfortunately, Ryzen ADJ hasn't been updated to support these Dragon Range processors, so I wasn't able to power limit them in Linux. Anyway, I was expecting the extra cache to help the 7945HX3D the most in this workload. And although it's faster, the difference is only small. But to be fair, I don't actually know if Ubuntu 23.01 understands 3D Cash. Honestly, in most other workloads, the difference between AMD's 7945HX and 7945HX3D were only small. I'm not going to waste your time, so I'll just quickly skip through all of the tests, but feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look at any of the results. As the 3D version isn't much different, there's not really any point talking about how the 7945HX3D compares to Intel, as I've already covered that in depth in another video. AMD AMD's new Ryzen 9 7945HX3D was 13% faster in these specific workloads when compared against Intel's 13980HX with both power limited to 65 watts. Intel has the edge in single core tests, MATLAB, and AES encryption and decryption. AMD's lack of lower powered e cores gave it the win in multi core rendering tests, though. The gap gets smaller when both processors are allowed to run with higher power limits. But AMD was still a little ahead in this selection of workloads. Look, at the end of the day, in these specific workloads, the 3D option was barely faster than the non-3D option. Best case, we're looking at a 5% performance gain with the extra cache with both processors power limited to 65 watts. With the higher 130 watt limit, both could potentially thermal throttle depending on the workload. But now the non-3D version had a slight lead. Perhaps its liquid metal is helping it out. Or these workloads don't care about cache so much, and the higher clock speeds from non-3D give it the advantage. There wasn't much difference between the integrated graphics in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 720p. The extra L3 cache didn't help out the 7945HX3D in this game with the iGPU only, like it did in this game earlier with the Nvidia graphics in use. None of these laptops are able to offer amazing battery life, but the Intel one was lasting for 57 percent longer when playing a YouTube video on the integrated graphics. In the past, AMD has usually done much better than Intel here, but that just wasn't the case with these top-end processors. It's not looking so great for the Radeon 610M iGPU. So then, is the 7945HX3D worth it? Outside of gaming, no, unless you have a specific niche workload that will benefit from more L3 cache. And I didn't come across any in our usual test suite. As for gaming, well, 
by the time you're spending 3400 US dollars on a 7945HX laptop, an extra $300 is only 9% more money, which you may be willing to spend if you want the best. Especially if you plan on playing games at lower resolutions. 9% more money for an average 9% FPS boost at 1080p doesn't sound unreasonable. And if you're playing games that benefit from the extra cash, then it's even better. For most people though, the 3D probably isn't worth it. The 1440p screen and RTX 4090 graphics mean that you'll probably be gaming at 1440p anyway. Maybe even 4K, and the extra cash just matters less at those higher resolutions. And then when you throw in the possibility of a game not even running on the correct CCD, and potentially you're paying more for nothing. But to be fair, that didn't happen too much to us. We only noticed it in 2 out of 25 games, and I can only assume that that would improve over time with updates. But still though, when it happens, it kind of makes you wonder why you didn't just save the 300 going for the non-3D. There's way more to the ASUS SCAR 17 and SCAR 18 than just the CPUs though. Check out one of my detailed reviews over here next before you buy. These are not cheap gaming laptops, so it's worth spending an extra few minutes doing some research. I'll see you in one of those next.